For more on this unique relationship between the U.S. and China on trade, I spoke with Kenneth Lieberthal. He is the senior fellow at the Foreign Policy and Global Economy and Development at the Brookings Institute. He began by speaking about the trade talks between the two sides in the 1990s. On the Chinese side, I think it became very clear. Uh, it, you could see it in the final negotiations with Premier Zhu Rongji that uh, the Chinese leadership of Jiang Zemin and Zhu Rongji viewed WTO entry as very important for better enabling them to carry out the domestic reforms in China that they thought were critical to China's future success. On the U.S. side, our own politics were very, very tough on this. So we needed a very high quality agreement in order to be able to get uh, permanent normal trade relations for China passed by the U.S. Congress. Uh, this, this was a politically important contextual set of issues on both sides as these negotiations took place. How did you reconcile the differences? No, frankly, at the end of the day, uh, we made some compromises on, th you know, inevitably in negotiations, you have to give a little to get a little. Uh, I thought on balance, the Chinese side made the tougher uh, compromises. After all, our economy is already relatively open. Uh, for China, a lot of these changes were really consequential for the economy. I think the judgment of uh, Premier Zhu and uh, President Jiang was correct that these changes for China, while very difficult, would also be very beneficial over a period of years. I think if you look at the tremendous GDP growth that occurred after 2002, after China's formal entry into the WTO, uh, a, a lot of that GDP growth reflected the playing out of the reforms that Jiang Zemin and Zhu Rongji had set up. It's been more than a decade since the uh, official entry into the WTO. A lot of reforms were discussed. Many reforms were implemented, uh, most notably on the financial sector with the banks, cleaning up the banks, mm -hmm. and ensuring perhaps a more, more open market. How would you grade the success of China's entry into the WTO as it stands today? Uh, I think the major changes that China made were in the first five years after entry. Uh, when this was pushed very hard and a lot of difficult changes were made. Uh, I think it then kind of ran out of steam, frankly. And so in other areas that were, frankly, very important on the U.S. side and for many other countries, areas such as government procurement, uh, China has then not taken the additional steps that were anticipated. Uh, nevertheless, on balance, I think the agreement has been a very good thing. One of the good things for, from the perspective of U.S.-China relations, since that's really the underlying rationale for this uh, discussion, uh, is that it has taken major U.S.-China disagreements on trade issues and subjected them to third-party arbitration. This summer, there's an announcement that they would restart uh, or continue on the negotiations, the bilateral treaty in terms of trade. Um, that's still ongoing yeah, that's now. That's actually a bilateral investment treaty. Bilateral investment treaty. We don't know the results of that yet. Um, how important is that to be completed? I mind? actually think that's very important. Uh, the big issue now uh, in each direction is the terms of investment, scope, rules, et cetera, of investment in the other country. Uh, I think that uh, develop, uh, signature of a bilateral investment treaty that establishes uh, high quality standards that both sides adhere to will increase the flow of direction in both directions in a major way. Uh, I frankly think that's very good for the overall U.S.-China relationship because it builds interest beyond the foreign policy community. It builds interest throughout each society uh, in continuing a substantial relationship with the other side. It gets a lot of people on each side to get to know the other side up close and personal. Uh, and I think that that uh, overall bodes well for the future. As you look towards the next five or ten years in the relationship between the United States and China, when it comes to things like trade and the economy, what do you see as the biggest challenge? Well, you know, we have a couple of big negotiations. There's another big negotiation going on now multilaterally in Asia, and that's the trade Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP negotiations. China is not a participant in those. If that does produce success, I think there is a very good possibility that China will then negotiate entry to that as it negotiated entry to the WTO in an earlier era. The uh, 
the obligations that China would take on to join the TPP would very much help the leadership of China uh, carry through the reform efforts uh, that the Third Plenum outlined uh, in such significant fashion. And so we may see again an international negotiation uh, serve the interests of the Chinese reform leadership in making the Chinese economy more competitive, more efficient, and give it a more sustainable development model.